Hey everyone. This video is about the Texas Instruments TI-66 programmable, which came on the mark in 1983. And the 66 was the successor to the legendary TI-68 and TI-69 calculators, which it shared the same instruction set with. And it was quite a design departure from its predecessors. It adopted a new landscape form factor, which must have been influenced by HP's successful Pioneer series. And... Uh, although it didn't have alpha support, it did add the ability to view abbreviations of instructions on its low-power LCD screen. This was a big improvement over the display of key codes from previous models. Another departure was the manufacture of the TI-66 was outsourced to Toshiba. Um, TI decided to seek the help of external partners after the failure of its infamous TI-88 project. Uh, the 88 was the, originally intended to be the successor of the TI-59, uh, but never made it to market. And that's a fascinating story in itself, and I'll, I'll include some links in the video description. Physically, the TI-66 had fairly good build quality, although the housing was all plastic, and it's uh, slightly larger uh, than the Pioneer calculators uh, at 9 by 14 centimetres. Uh, it has a 16-digit LCD display that slants uh, forward slightly, and each alphanumeric digit supports 14 segments. Uh, the keyboard includes a very similar set of keys to the TI-58. They're arranged differently, and the symbols are injection molded on the keys, which is a nice touch for the time. And the keyboard is very logically laid out. Uh, the keyboard has a single uh, shift key, and... Uh, there's also an inverse key. And the large equals key uh, on the bottom right is reminiscent of some desktop calculators. Uh, on the right side of the case is a proprietary uh, serial uh, port that allowed it to be connected to the PC200 printer. But unlike its predecessors, there's no solid state module port and no card reader. Uh, on the back, you can see uh, there's a screw-down compartment uh, for the uh, two LR44 batteries, which apparently lasted a long time. Uh, and there are some places uh, for four rubber feet, although two of them have fallen off uh, this particular model. And uh, you can see on the label that this was made in Japan. And I believe under the label is a single screw that can be removed to take the calculator apart. So you actually only need to take the battery compartment screw out to access the mains PCB. And as you can see, the Toshiba component tree is very simple. Uh, there's just two surface-mounted chips and a handful of discrete components. So there's the Toshiba RT6875A system on a chip processor. And again, this was different from the Texas Instruments processor used in the TI-58 uh, and 59. And there's also the Toshiba... Uh, CMOS, um, static, RAM, and DIP, and this holds 1K of 4-bit nibbles or 512 program steps. And the slanted LCD display is held to the main PCB with a metal bracket. And the main PCB also serves as the backboard for the keyboard uh, that you can access if you take out uh, these seven screws. Uh, and you can also see on the bottom right the two-pin serial connector. So the 66 supports TI's algebraic operating system or AOS and it works in a similar way to a modern algebraic calculator and so we can enter 2 plus 3 times 4 and then equals and most of the scientific operations are shifted uh, so say to take the sign of 45 uh, we would need to use the second function key and then sign and typical for TI calculators, there's also an inverse key, uh, which is used in combination with other functions to obtain the inverse. Uh, so you say to calculate the inverse sign, now uh, we would hit our second function, inverse, uh, and then sign, and we'll be back at 45. And another example is, uh, say we take uh, the log, natural log, uh, if we hit inverse natural log, uh, that calculates e to the x. And the calculator has two registers, uh, the X register and the T register, and T is used to support some data types that require 
uh, two values. So an example of that is polar coordinates. And so a polar value requires the radial coordinate to be in the T register and the angle to be in the X register. So uh, let's enter, say, 7 as our radial length. And we can use the X to swap T key uh, to switch this into T. And now let's enter, say, 30 degrees as our angle. Uh, and we can use uh, the polar to rectangular operation uh, now. And so 3.5 is our value for Y. Uh, and if, if we hit X to T, uh, we can see our value for X. And we can store and recall numbers uh, from memory using uh, the store and recall keys. Uh, so let's say store uh, pi in register 00. zero. Uh, so we'll hit store and then 00. zero. Uh, and if we clear, uh, we can recall 00, zero uh, to get the value back. And oddly, the 66 doesn't display the two-digit memory address when you type it, which can be confusing. And programming on the 66 is fairly straightforward. Uh, so let's use the, our usual fall distance example. The distance uh, an object falls under gravity in time t. And we'll start by clearing programming uh, memory uh, with the CP command. So that's our second function and the one key. And uh, now we'll hit the learn key. Uh, to start recording program steps. And we'll assume the user has entered the time t in the extra register. And we'll begin the program uh, with a special label A. Uh, and we want to square our time and then multiply by 4.8 uh, and then hit equals. And you'll notice immediately how slowly steps are recorded. And this was due to a difference from the TI 58 and 59. Every time you key in a program step, all subsequent steps are shifted. Uh, and this uh, slowness can be alleviated a little by repartitioning uh, the memory for fewer program steps. Uh, but it is a little bit annoying. Um, so. We're at the end of the, our program now, and uh, we want to terminate it with a run stop uh, to show the actual answer. And then we hit the learn key again uh, to leave learning mode. And so now to run the program, uh, we can just enter a number for T and then hit the A key. Uh, so an object falls uh, 120 meters in uh, five seconds. And the programming module on the TI-66 it was reasonably powerful for its time, and it supported indirect addressing and conditional branching. And so this is a program to solve the N Queens problem, um, but I'm not going to run it because it takes 1 hour and 55 minutes, uh, which is one of the slowest on the N Queens benchmark list, and twice as slow as the TI-58C. And so it's one of the slowest programmables ever made, and the runtime was partly due uh, to uh, jump labels being searched for sequentially by the calculator um, each time they were referenced. And so the TI-66 was an interesting transitionary device for Texas Instruments, and it was relatively inexpensive compared to its predecessors, but was moderately powerful with a good amount of memory, uh, although it, had, it was very slow in execution speed. Uh, probably my favourite aspect of the TI-66 uh, are is, is aesthetics. I think it's one of the most beautiful calculators TI released. Uh, another strength is it's also very easy to use and a great way to play with TI-58 and 59 compatible programs uh, because it's hard to find examples of those devices in working order these days. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.